Okay, welcome back to the third lecture. So there is a question about uh, Nestro method. Let's look at what is the question. Okay. Yeah, the question is that uh, what is the intuition behind uh, this particular update? Let's uh, spend a little bit of time. What is the update we have? <clears throat> If you look at uh, this. PK plus one is uh, beta BK minus alpha. And this del operator of uh, theta K is beta BK. Right, and uh, the actual update in theta k plus one is equal to k plus one. All right, suppose this is the function we have. We are here and uh, this is uh, a point with theta k Okay, <clears throat> just like a, a momentum method, okay. and you expect at this point, this is a positive, uh, this is always uh, towards right on this. This is theta k, and it will be theta k plus beta vk. All right, because beta is a positive thing, and uh, vk is a uh, uh, we started somewhere here and we added up to that point and <clears throat> uh, it's a positive direction. So you expect uh, the whole thing beta k is just like momentum method. Okay, it uh, cumulatively adds up. Only thing is that instead of theta k, we are actually taking gradients a little bit ahead of us. Instead of theta k, we are taking here. But the crucial, uh, point to observe here that, suppose instead of here, now you are here, okay, theta k. When you're very close to the local minimum, you want to slow down. If you're here, and if you happen to be, this happen to be theta k plus beta vk, which can be computed by where you are and uh, you ask the gradient. Since it's, it's increasing, this becomes, uh, this, this is a positive value. So you are reducing VK, velocity is going down suddenly. That pushes the uh, arriving ball and stops it, uh, not stops it, uh, like you know, slows it down. That is exactly uh, Nestro method does when uh, all this while the gap between theta k is increasing while you overshoot where you're about to overshoot, suddenly the gap reduces compared with the previous iteration. Uh, is this clear? Uh, so just to clarify, are we just taking a guess of where we'll be next using our current velocity to update the actual that's net. correct that's correct you as you would like to actually have it uh, to be theta k plus one that's the actual position you will be but you can't compute theta k plus one until unless you know what is the uh, velocity vk plus one so, so what do you do it's, it's a it's a in it's a point in between somewhere okay thank you yeah uh, any other question? Okay, that's about uh, natural method. And I would I would really suggest you, even whether you're Python person or not, go and uh, practice a little bit, uh, do coding. Okay. Okay, beta values is uh, 
typically suggests to be 0.9 in practical you can start with a point sorry point point eight very close to one and you can change it depending on the application but uh, it's a good uh, value to start with then <clears throat> yeah yeah just go start coding and see how they perform and try with the different values it will be very different experience when your coding and really seeing how it is works. And in theory, everything is smooth, but when you're working with the examples, it becomes difficult and... <clears throat> okay, next method is ADA, ADA grade. It's a extra short form for adaptive subgradient method. Okay. <clears throat> Again, uh, we have highlighted in the uh, challenges posed by gradient method is that uh, the method uh, naive gradient descent and uh, conjugate gradient descent, uh, they actually do not um, like uh, treat different parameters uh, differently. They all have same learning rate for all theta i's. So this is the first algorithm which actually try to address this issue. If uh, you people might, uh, might have heard like, you know, exploring versus exploiting. So when you don't see certain parameters uh, updating too much, you want to give more weightage to them so that you understand them better. So the learning parameter, which are infrequent, you want to give more weight and you want to go in that direction and see whether uh, it's a good direction or not. And uh, which you already seen, you actually give less weight. That's what uh, Adagred do. <clears throat> so the update is as follows and uh, this good thing about this method is that we don't worry about uh, separately finding learning rate it comes from gradients directly so look at the update theta i so for each component you have a uh, cumulative summation okay of gradients in that direction, okay? G, uh, G, uh, what is this? G, K, we know that it's a F theta K. So G, K, I is essentially Yeah, so theta I, sorry. That is what we have. You take uh, some of squares of these terms and call it a SI. And then you update. So if you are taken small, uh, like uh, if you are taken uh, few steps in the direction of uh, i th component, then the weight will be higher because uh, you're adding up uh, the gradients, the weight will be higher. So you explore more in that direction. When you explore enough, it becomes uh, uh, like uh, less important and uh, the learning rate becomes, uh, uh, are there any questions? No, yeah, uh, that is a key observation here and uh, uh, that's a uh, capture by this update. And the epsilon value here in this update is just uh, uh, to make sure that uh, you're not dividing by zero. So you take uh, 10 power minus eight or maybe uh, smaller than that. Uh, there is a question by J8. Okay, here is the dimensionality, right? Which we get from the number of weights in theta. Uh, K is the iteration. We are at a K, Kth iteration. We are updating uh, SK for that iteration. All right. And uh, what else we have here? Uh, this alpha. It turns out that uh, uh, it still we call uh, uh, it's not a learning parameter, it is part of learning rate. 
uh, this alpha suddenly becomes uh, not very important and that uh, its value is uh, a good value to start with is that uh, 0.01 <clears throat> yeah uh, of course someone can guess uh, you, uh, you read this and guess what exactly is the translate to what is it saying why it is the case there is a drawback to this method so we are adding positive terms here in the summation so it's a monotonically increasing uh value in each iteration so if uh, you are exploring too much and you know, suddenly you can actually end up uh, uh, like suppressing certain parameters quickly than before learning it well and uh, that's a drawback <clears throat> so suppose you're uh, moving in a valley and valley takes turn at one point since you are going in one direction you think that that component is uh, uh, explored enough but when valley turns uh, like uh, that rosenberg function where you have a turn suddenly that direction becomes uh, more important uh, than the one which is not explored so you need to actually make sure that uh, uh, that didn't, uh, that doesn't happen <clears throat> so the demanding methods actually addresses this issue and uh, for someone who is following this is actually temporal minus 8 as i said so look at this performance yeah as we have seen the, there are three methods first three methods uh, or which we studied already and if you compare with uh, the uh, the method we just saw at a grade which is much smoother and uh, quicker to reach the global minimum <clears throat> it looks like uh, the bullet in the movie called wanted you know it's nice curve yeah then to overcome that issue of uh, monotonicity in s let's uh, then there is a, a method which is not published but uh, proposed in a lecture by the one who actually uh, proposed the earlier method <clears throat> where we actually don't continuous increase it we uh, give a um, what what we call it is that uh, exponential decaying factor we multiply with the uh, exponential decaying factor here rms stands for root mean square this is precisely when you have a time series and the time series is updated like this then you call it is a uh, root mean square uh, uh, root mean square of the time series and <clears throat> okay there is a question what do you mean by certain weights being updated more and less frequently okay let's look at uh, the figure there is a this is a theta one direction if you look at uh, the change happens in this direction is uh, this a theta one theta two if we go in this direction uh, <clears throat> yeah not uh, exactly this section wait a minute so i'm trying to figure out a, a good point to illustrate this and um, suppose you are somewhere okay theta k here theta k plus 1 
where such that uh, F of, sorry, uh, such that F of theta K by theta one is same as uh, F of theta K plus one by theta one, okay? Suppose this uh, path is such that uh, the gradient didn't change. So we didn't learn much about uh, this direction, this component. Um, whereas, uh, theta two is higher than k plus one, theta two, okay? Suppose this transition from this move is such that uh, these two hold. This is one thing and this is another thing. So about one parameter we learned and other parameter we didn't learn much. So if this happens over say uh, 10 steps, if you multiply with uh, uh, multiply alpha one and uh, uh, theta one and theta two with the same parameter, you are giving same learning rate to both without exploring both of them equally. So to do, to eliminate this, what we do is that if you didn't see much change in the gradient in one component or yeah, one direction, you give a different value, which is uh, higher compared with uh, in the direction in the where you have seen more change in the gradients. Does it make sense? Yeah, thank you. Let's see what is this expression exactly. So if you start with uh, S1 hat is equal to zero, then what we have is that uh, just like earlier, you can write two is equal to one minus gamma and say i component. This is a, uh, this is element wise product. So what we get is that uh, G1 whole square, just like that. <clears throat> now, if you look at uh, I three, then you have gamma as I had two as uh, one minus gamma. Just do quick uh, work. Uh, plus one minus gamma. So. <clears throat> Oh, sorry. Uh, let me do it once again. What we have is that uh, um, gamma into one minus gamma G I one whole square plus one minus gamma into whole square. So uh, if you continue to do this, then what we get for i is equal to gamma square, one minus gamma chi one whole square plus uh, gamma one minus two whole square plus one minus gamma into j three whole square. So you understand what is this recurrence. So for K is summation uh, j is equal to zero to K or K minus 
one, I guess, uh, K minus two, probably gamma power K minus two minus J. They, you can, you no need to worry about exact things, but G I one. Same. Okay, so you have second order terms, uh, second order uh, uh, this events, and you see that it's exponentially giving weights to each. Uh, so it's uh, sorry, it's j square, and it's giving exponentially exponential weight to these uh, uh, gradients in direction in the direction of a partial differentiation in the direction of uh, i. <clears throat> is is this expression clear to you? So instead of summing earlier, what we did uh, earlier, something wrong with this. Come on. Yeah. So if you look at uh, earlier method, we have a summation without weights. Whereas now we actually have one minus gamma, one minus gamma into gamma power, some j, uh, k minus j kind of thing with a uh, gamma factor a little bit here and there. So because of this weight, the weights won't become too extreme. It doesn't increase so drastically. That's the advantage of uh, uh, this weighted sum. And uh, <clears throat> if you're actually normalizing the a gradient particularly uh, particularly if you have a, 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 a normalized one then you actually have a finite value it will not uh, uh, like you know increase to uh, very higher values and that's the advantage that we have and once you have this update then it's essentially the same as earlier and now instead of uh, a value which can go to a bigger value uh, we have a, a value which is bounded. <clears throat> and uh, that is exactly RMS uh, uh, Pro. Yeah, and so is an exercise, go home and uh, implement instead of uh, this, uh, this, this update uh, without weights, in add a grade, use with weighted and see how performance changes. So try with the different functions and try the RMS implement. And okay, <clears throat> once we have this, uh, then the next method is uh, other delta. It's uh, a method, an extension of the other grade uh, adaptive gradient method. It's uh, what we do here. If you observe this update in the RMS prop, suppose this theta is a, a kind of distance, like coordinates, like a think of uh, meters. And uh, the gradient, here we have gradient. This is square root of gradient squares so gk and this one have same units this is the distance units and this is this becomes a constant no units so what they observe that um, instead of being keeping constant maybe if you match units by if you if i replace alpha with uh, a, a quantity which is uh, which has same um, units as theta, then it might improve. That's what attempt they gave. And in fact, it's in, it turns out that uh, uh, it works well. So what we do is that we remove alpha and we, instead of alpha, we remove and replace with uh, RMS delta theta i. Theta is uh, uh, essentially difference between theta k 
the sequence, we have theta k minus theta k minus one, okay? This is uh, delta theta and you have a time series. So again, you can uh, construct a root mean square, um, the sequence for this time series. And that is essentially this, all right? Just like S had in the earlier, this one, where we use uh, squares of gradients for uh, uh, updating S. There is some error with this application, sorry. Instead of gradient difference, we are looking at the distance difference. That's the only difference, uh, only criteria. Like uh, we are replacing alpha with uh, that distance because uh, this from this uh, formula, you know that uh, uh, t hat should have same units as uh, theta. So the, in this update, units on the left side and units on the right side are same. And uh, this update uh, eliminates the requirement for alpha parameter. And that turns out to be a good uh, method. <clears throat> yes, is RMSGI, uh, there is a question, is RMSGI same as uh, square root of GI? Not square root of GI, we already defined uh, RMS of GI as uh, RMS of GI is a GI square is a time series. We uh, GI is a time series. RMS is square root of square of these terms. So it is essentially S I hat K. Is that clear? Is that clear? Okay. Yeah. That's good. So we have a, a RMS method. And finally, uh, the most important uh, method uh, in the most uh, commonly used optimization method is ADAM. And it, it actually captures both, um, both RMS prop and other grade. Also momentum and combines these ideas and uh, updates uh, and again, uh, the learning parameter becomes part of this expression. So you don't need to do a separate line search, which is required for the other methods. Uh, so let's look at this. So what it does is that, so just like uh, RMS prop, this method also updates learning rates for each parameter theta i, all right? And <clears throat> it uses decaying average, that is uh, having a gamma parameter, which we uh, use for updating squares of gradients, uh, which actually uses on velocities as well. These are the important points. This is what we used in RMS prop. We used decaying average of squared gradients. And in addition to that, like a, a momentum method, we use exponential decaying average of gradients as well, not just squared gradient. We use actually a decaying average of gradients. How do we do it? The velocity, we again, we have uh, two things. One is uh, a velocity just like a momentum and squared gradient term again, like RMS prop and uh, other grade, other delta, we have a uh, uh, exponential decaying terms for squared gradient that is captured from here. Again, note that this is a element wise product. So what we have is that gamma S is Power k i ith component here is one minus gamma s. We have two gammas here, gamma 
for velocity and gamma for s and g k i whole square all right just like earlier method in addition we have vk plus one again vk each term in vk velocity vk plus one is uh, we have a different uh, gamma parameter here i plus one minus gamma just gradients it's not gradient square gradient and once we have this algorithm starts with uh, taking initial values for v velocity and uh, uh, s uh, zero so that creates a bias compared with the gradient method what we do is that uh, to eliminate that bias we actually divide it by this values at each iteration so you first update uh, v as follows and uh, then normalize them using this uh, in k iteration you normalize it by one minus gamma power k in for each guys and just like earlier we have a update for theta as follows if you notice there is no theta k here because this is uh, captured by the velocity term <clears throat> Again, what it does, it actually uh, has both the properties. If you notice, uh, uh, one is that uh, like momentum, it has velocity, which we really appreciated. And then like uh, RMS prop and uh, other delta, we have this uh, uh, treating each component separately uh, by using exploration and exploitation. We want to give more weight to the uh, direction which we haven't explored explored much okay that is a uh, delta there are like there are debates on whether adam is better than the other methods or not they're like uh, now adam method actually the paper which is uh, uh, it's like a published in 2014 and so far the number of citations are on this on Google Scholar, if you notice. So this shows how popular this method is. And it's very commonly used because if you look at the expression, it's very easy to implement and practically shown to work very well. And there are papers where uh, they say that uh, uh, stochastic gradient descent is better than Adam in some cases. So look for this uh, this kind of literature and uh, have a, get an understand uh, all these, uh, the, like Adam uh, optimizer is mostly spoken in terms of um, uh, neural networks. So it, it plays a crucial role. And there are certain updates on this uh, method. There's something called uh, ADA bound. Okay, this is proposed in 2019. So there are certain improvements on this method and uh, it's uh, um, yeah still popular and works well. So, and in our practicals also, we see that uh, uh, we are using this method. Uh, this is a method we mostly uh, start using uh, as first attempt. Are uh, there any questions on Adam or any other method so far we studied? I will have uh, implementation of this. Uh, it's easy to implement. Uh, so I left it as an exercise for you guys so that you can practice. But um, if you have any difficulty, uh, please tell me in implementation. Also, I will look for a good uh, simple test function, which can actually show uh, how uh, Adam works better than the other uh, methods. And <clears throat> okay. Uh, if you have no other question on this method, okay, let's, uh, uh, in the first order methods, the la last topic is uh, hypergradient uh, descent, which uh, can be applied to any of the methods we studied so far, uh, where uh, learning rate is, uh, uh, like, you know, plays a crucial role. And uh, <clears throat> this method is not really useful in 
this Adam and other methods, but still have a look at it. Uh, this method, actually what it does is that it applies uh, gradient descent on the learning rate itself. How does it do? So again, we are uh, outside uh, this where uh, uh, treating each uh, parameter differently with respect to learning rate, we again assume that we have same alpha for all uh, components in the direction, okay? This is the update we have. This is a general, a general update we have. And if you are following this, then the hyper gradient descent, what it does is that it introduces a hyper gradient learning parameter. Okay, that is a mu. Instead of learning alpha, it actually learns a mu. It actually fixes a mu and updates alpha according to a gradient descent. So in addition to actual gradient descent, which we are doing, we actually do one more gradient descent and where this, this is the update. And uh, what is the advantage of this? The advantage is that it's easy to compute. Uh, what is this value? This, uh, uh, this partial differentiation with respect to alpha, it becomes very easy because you can see that this is just a uh, dot product between gradient at uh, current iteration and the gradient, av gradient available at current iteration and the gradient available in the previous iteration. So you, you can compute. The another advantage is that uh, this is uh, less sensitive. Uh, the uh, updates are less sensitive to the hyperparameter than the actual parameter alpha. So even if you're fixing mu or uh, changing according to some other approach, the method doesn't really uh, get affected uh, as much as the case it was uh, with the learning par parameter. So instead of fixing this alpha or updating at particular according to the some rule, you actually do that uh, on hyperparameter, which is uh, for which the methods are not. So you can apply these, uh, uh, this hyper gradient descent method on for any method we studied where we have this particular update. And you can simply modify any of the codes above and incorporate a, a hyper gradient descent in them. And yeah. So next class, uh, we will spend uh, most of the time on second order methods. And well, let's see how much time we have. We have 10 minutes. So it's, can, can someone tell me like uh, why in neural networks, uh, we, uh, we have discussed this point, why in neural network we mostly use first order methods compared with uh, uh, second order methods and what is the reason behind them? Why is so? That's a good answer, Rohan. Uh, why is the case? Yeah. That's good. Um, so Hessian is uh, too expensive to compute because we have seen in the Taylor expansion that uh, if it is one dimension, it's easy. Taylor expansion of second order approximation that is simply this one. And computing second order uh, derivative is easier in one dimension. But when it uh, comes to sec, uh, the higher, higher order uh, functions, higher dimension function, this approximation looks like this. Okay, here H is called Hessian. And computing Hessian is one thing. And as you probably know, computing inverse of Hessian, that is what is uh, shown here, okay? 
that is what uh, the first method is for. Then we see um, uh, like, a, uh, like a modified version of this, but in the naive way, we need to compute uh, uh, inverse of this Hessian. It's too complicated. It's uh, so uh, people try to n power three for computing uh, inverse. Uh, I'm not sure. Like uh, computing Hessian is n square. If you have a number of data points, uh, uh, the dimension is n. Uh, not important, but it's a good question. Anyone uh, is aware of what is the uh, complexity of uh, computing inverse for uh, a function of dimension n times n? I look for it and uh, I'll get back to you. That's a good question. Yeah, so what is the advantage? Uh, can someone say what is the advantage of uh, going for uh, second order approximation then? first order. Suppose you, you can compute Hessian and everything and uh, why it is uh, good to have a second order approximation than first order. But uh, the, the, you know, uh, the reason like why these things happens, why, what it does like, uh, yeah, that is a, a right answer. This is closer to the true function. We have seen theta uh, in earlier, theta cos, Theta, just an example where one dimension example, we have seen that second order is much closer in, uh, in the representation than the first order, first order, and which is better than the constant order or zero order. So that's important. And uh, so it is uh, good to explore if your problem is not very difficult and it is uh, absolutely necessary to go for second order methods maybe these ideas will be useful and it is good to learn. And that is what uh, we spend in the next lecture. And I will update a little bit more on this lectures by tomorrow. So have a look at it before coming to lectures. And uh, for today, I think uh, that's a lot already. And I, ha I want to mention like, if you guys are interested in something, um, the paper, Nineteen seventy-six. It actually, the uh, it's a technical report. It actually uh, proves why uh, proves um, uh, mathematically, like uh, use uh, analytically that conjugate gradient, uh, conjugate uh, gradient descent method is uh, better than naive gradient descent. Uh, for quadratic functions. And if you're interested in reading such literature, this is one. And another book, very uh, nice book for optimization is uh, Luyen Berger. This is a 1973 book. And you can see that uh, uh, our topics are very similar to this, particularly chapter eight. Okay, have a look. And if you're interested in knowing more uh, math behind all these uh, um, methods, then Leuenberg has a very good treatment on this. Yeah. <clears throat> this uh, book title is uh, Introduction to Linear and Nonlinear Programming. And it's a classical book. Have a look. And I think uh, I'll stop here. If you have any questions, uh, we can spend next uh, 10 minutes on. Oh, this question, there is a question. Is there any, is there any easy way to get the collab notebook to PDF? I never tried, but uh, did you try uh, print to PDF or something? I never tried actually. And uh, I tried the print to PDF, but it seemed to cut off in weird spots. And I don't know if that's because I don't have enough RAM on my laptop and need to go onto my desktop, but it oh. just, cut off in weird spots like uh, is, is it specifically is like uh, is it removing outputs or what 
No, so like graphs, it will show like maybe the top bit and then further down, it'll just be a blank. Like it just, it seems to glitch and it's not. Yeah, okay. There is uh, one suggestion. You can use uh, you can use Jupyter Notebook for the same uh, purpose. Uh, it seems like a Jupyter Notebook might have an option. I never tried uh, printing it to PDF. Mm, okay. I'm sorry for that. And how does the performance of conjugate gradient compare to the momentous based methods? See, uh, that's uh, one exercise one should do. The first of all, uh, conjugate gradient is uh, uh, very useful when you have quadratic function. So it works well, but if you have non-quadratic functions, you need to use beta approximately. And uh, that's uh, one of the exercises we have like a uh, use. Yeah, use uh, the that update and compare with the other methods. That will be a good practice, but we can't really directly say that conjugate gradient can work well for non-quadratic functions theoretically compared with uh, uh, momentum-based method. Okay. Uh, so there is some link shared from Rohan. I think, uh, I believe it's related to printing things. Okay, there are quite some suggestions here. I think it should work. All right. Any other questions? Thank you, Alex. I hope you guys are enjoying. Uh, No, like uh, let's, uh, tomorrow we'll talk about second order methods and we'll spend a little bit more on optimization chapter itself and yeah. Okay, thank you. Have a great evening. See you tomorrow.